Popular Planning Commission. And uh, first thing we do is approve the agenda. So then we're gonna take a look and then we'll get a motion as that comes. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. Okay. Motion by Stephanie, second by Barb. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Agenda approved. So moving on, we have the comments from the chair. And uh, first, I'd like to thank Aaron for covering last week. I really appreciate that. Uh, and it looks like the big item from last week was discussion of the on the record review change or potential change. And it looks like everyone left it or the commission left it with uh, consulting with a MAPA expert um, after the DRB seems to have had a not not such a warm reception to it. Is that the right characterization of what happened? We were also going to try okay. to meet with the DRB, right? Yes. So I I did talk with Bill Fraser um, a little bit about it, and and he certainly could see both sides as well, and he thought it would be good. You know, we were obviously already going to be inviting the DRB, the Planning Commission, and somebody from another community who has MAPA, so that way we can talk firsthand with somebody and ask questions about how the process works um, and doesn't work and what are the pluses and minuses. And Bill thought that was a good idea, and he also thought inviting city council or at least some city councilors would also be helpful because uh, they have for a number of years had an interest in it and whatever we learn, they would probably benefit from. So rather than doing, doing it more than once, if we were gonna invite somebody, we should have city council. So um, we'll try to set something up. Meredith, who's our DRB uh, staff person is, has been busy. So we're, we're looking at some time in in early January to try to set something up, whether it's on one of your nights or somebody else's night to try to fit that in. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, that sounds like a good discussion for us to have. Um, as far as other things from last week, it looks like there was a discussion of uh, housing changes due to the statutory changes. And just so that I'm clear, the document uh, with potential amendments to zoning that you sent out this week, Mike, is it directly related to that? Okay. Um, so that's yes. good. All right. And uh, there was a presentation of the capital improvements plan, which would have been, I regret that I missed that. Okay, well, I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, you know, uh, I guess I do have one thing to add actually, and that's just to, to check in with the subcommittees and see how everyone feels about how that's going. Um, I know for the housing, we have uh, a plan to, to meet probably next week. Um, the economic development subcommittee that I'm also part of, I think it was economic development, uh, we haven't scheduled anything yet, uh, but as for the folks on the other subcommittees, do you, does anyone have any updates? Uh, Kirby, did we, did we schedule a meeting for housing? Did I miss something? No, I just sent you an email asking you to oh, do it. Okay. Uh, after all right. All right. Yeah. I sent you out something today. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And, and transportation, um, we were going to meet this past week, right, Ariane? but we're going to meet next week or this week sorry yeah and i i'm sorry i actually um anyway i'll email you about it but um i double i didn't sometimes my husband's schedule is <laughs> i don't know it so i'm not sure i can meet this thursday um okay. but I'll, I'll send out an email but and, and i'll okay. resolve the housing one 
yeah, we so we did some sort of modifications. Um, Aaron, are you there? Is Aaron? Of course, yes. Oh, okay. All right. I just can't see you. So, um, yeah, so we made some uh, changes that or some simplifications, hopefully, and we had a really good discussion. So we just need to kind of take that one step further. So um, we will meet sometime in the coming week, maybe then, Ariane. Sometime in the next, in the coming week. Why don't you suggest some times actually that work for you? Okay, and I'm also happy. I mean, if you and Aaron just want to finish it up, I feel like I had a chance to. I don't. I just don't have straw on the transportation issue particularly. It oh. seems like it seems like we had general agreement about which, or I agreed with what you and Aaron. So anyway, but I'll, I'll send out an email. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have any of the other subcommittees that have anything to report? Including, I'm, I'm also interested right now in finding out how things are going as in if people think this is worthwhile, because it's worth checking up on. I don't, I don't want people to feel like they're wasting their time. I think it's worthwhile. I just sort of feel like, I mean, personally, I've sort of lost momentum on it, but. Um, now, um, you know, maybe with the coming new year and things looking up from here, um, I've gotten, I'm more in, invested in it, I guess. I feel like we can make some really good progress. Yeah, I think that that question might be answered a little more uh, concisely once we hear from Mike about the grant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, anybody the else have Continuity anything? and Structures Group has not met again, but we should. And I think, Marcella, did you send out the example from that? I think so. Oh, it's been like over a month, but. Yeah, I don't I thought, remember. I can't remember either. I mean, I can certainly go back and check. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought so. But we did, we had talked about providing more examples of like outreach language, and we have not done that yet. Right. I, I don't think I have anything from Marcella. I think, if, well, I, I need to just go back and look at If it did go out, it probably went out through Mike. But uh, yeah, I, I honestly don't remember. I will go look. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember seeing it, but maybe I, it's definitely possible that I missed it. Um, yeah, but it's I think the once, same. Once we have a chance to look at that, I think it might be helpful as a group to take a look at it as the full group and say, is this going to work for all the chapters? And, and if so, we can make new tabs for each one and, and go through the same process. But. OK. so. Uh... Let's plan to make that an item on the agenda for next time. Is that all right, Mike? So specifically, what is the, the item to review? Uh, to, to check in, uh, more or less to check in with the continuity and structure subcommittee. Okay. Can we can we rename that committee the Strunk and White Committee? Just feel like it just sounds no. like it's, it just rolls is that apps? Because that's uh, that doesn't sound fun to me. If that's if that's an app. White committee, that's uh, you know, elements of style, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's more than than just written style, so <laughs> Fair enough. Oh well. All right, so we should try to meet again, too, before the next meeting. OK. So John, did you have anything? You can shake your head if not. No. OK. All right. Well, that's it for the chair, uh, which gets us to general business. Uh, if we have anyone on the uh, meeting who has something other than something on the agenda. 
now's the time to speak up. I don't know who server is. Okay, so that's server is just part of the ARCA. Okay. All right, well, it looks like there's no one else here then. All right, with that, we can consider the minutes from November 23rd, if everyone take a look at those. I did look at those and I move approval of the minutes. I'll second. We have a second from Barb. Does anyone need a minute to take a look? Speak now. I do just have a quick question, um, but maybe after we approve them because it's really outside of the minutes. Okay. Uh, those in favor of approving the minutes from November 23rd, say aye. 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 You opposed? <laughs> Someone else, uh, too. You're getting eight member. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> okay. Uh, and so that was a motion by Ariane and a second by Barb. And it passed. Uh, Barb, what was your thing? No, I just had a question for Mike. If he ever uh, uh, discovered um, that listing for buildings, I believe it was under the energy section of, you know, it was $274,000. So it was a big line item for, on the CIP. Um, but it didn't, no one seemed to know what it was. Um, did you find out anything, Mike? No. I, I uh, texted um, uh, the mayor and also Kate uh, Stevenson, but they, they were going to look into it. I didn't know if you'd heard anything. Okay, just curious. Thanks. No, I mean, it could be, as you said, all the money was spoken for. It's just where somebody probably put it for purposes of this year's budget. Yeah, it was just my not guess. My guess is a majority of that or all of that is from the roof project because they had to put the standing seam roof up on the roof of City Hall. They put standing seam on the roof? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So yeah, that could have been, um, I just was curious as to why it appeared under what I thought was the energy section. So I guess it, yeah, thanks. That could be it. All right. <clears throat> and with that, we, uh, are on to an update of the zoning hearing scheduled for January 11. So, Mike, would you like to take over on that? I wasn't going to spend a lot on this, but I just wanted to let everybody know that the hearing notice did go out for January 11th. Almost got warned with the wrong date because for some reason I had a calendar that had the 2021 dates wrong for January. Don't see calendars that are wrong often, but... Uh, actually had one that had next year and December ended on a Thursday and then January 2021 started on Saturday. So it put all the days off by one. But we got through that. Um, and so I wanted to get you guys copies of it, but really I w there wasn't much else I was going to go and really get into. Um, just I sent you guys copies of the abbreviated, you know, where the line, the, the red lines were. Um, and I'll take any questions if people have them. Otherwise, we'll have a hearing on the 11th to talk about it. So Mike, this included changes that were more than just what was required by the legislature. It, these are changes going back to when? How far back? Uh, these changes, there were three, I'd consider three primary groups of changes. One was the group that we had talked about together as a planning commission about Sabin's pasture. And that we made two changes to one to traffic and one to the applicability for the planned unit development. So that was one set. The second set were um, 
I'll call them housing specific ones. There was a chunk of those that were required under state law because there were some S-237 made some changes to um, non-conforming lots, accessory apartments, how we are allowed to regulate um, up to four unit buildings. Um, we can't use character of the area, therefore we took all of them, all the times that we had four units and less as conditional uses and we shifted them all to permitted uses because we only look at three things under conditional use, um, character of the area, traffic and facilities, community facilities. It would never violate the first two so the, the only thing that was left was character of the area. And if we're no longer allowed to use character of the area, then we might as well make them permitted uses. So all, all residential uses are now going to be permitted up through four unit, if it is allowed in that district. So um, that's, this, that, that's part of the housing. While we were in working on housing, we also went through and touched on um, some other related housing related pieces. So um, we had some inconsistencies between our table of uses and our specific uses that are written in text. So we had a, our list of uses with all the districts and it's a table form, um, two dash figure two dash 15. And so we had listed uses and then you could go to the specific uses section of the zoning and find that there were uses in there that were residential that were not on the table. And so we needed to fix some of those. So we went through and sat down and, and, and kind of made things a little more logical and cleaned those up. So they weren't required under statute, but there was just some housekeeping to clean those up. Um, so that was the housing stuff is kind of in that. Most of it's required and a couple of it's just cleaned it up. And then the third group are a couple of administrative ones. So every time we go through these, we invariably run into a couple of these that just need to get fixed. Um, there's an inconsistency somewhere. So we went through and um, made a couple of edits uh, for some technical things. Um, in, in like section, one of the first ones that would be on that strikeout list, one, zero, zero, three, or four, inserts the removal of vegetation in a riparian buffer as a, as a trigger for in the definition of development. And the reason for that is if something doesn't hit the top definition of development, then it doesn't require a permit and therefore you can't put in the requirements and what we had was somebody who came in and wanted to cut down the trees in the water setback but they didn't do anything else to trigger a permit and therefore we couldn't prevent them from doing it had they been building a house they would not have been allowed to cut down those trees but because they were just cutting down the trees they didn't trigger the definition of development therefore they don't need a zoning permit therefore they were allowed to cut down the trees and so we just simply said, we, 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 we missed one layer of the bucket. You need to get it in that first bucket that says, if you're going to remove the trees, um, removal of trees in a water setback area requires a permit. And now we can catch those projects. So that's why that, and there are a number of those little things like that, that we went through. Um, and we also added in to that same piece same discussion was a discussion was a was a adding in a provision that went around the VPA listserv. It was a suggestion that South Burlington had put into theirs on um, how to address requests for reasonable accommodations. So those are if you have an ADA request, how how do you handle those and what's the procedure? So we thought that was a really good idea. So we built that into this revision. Um, we just felt that would be a, a good provision to add in. Um, we didn't take theirs, we, we kind of changed it. We thought we could make it fit a little better into ours by changing some of the requirements. So you'll also see that. So there are a number of these little ones where we caught 
Um, so they're kind of, as I said, three groups. There's the savings, the housing, and then there are these administrative pieces in there. I have one question. And when we have the presentation on January 11th, I'll have a PowerPoint and I'll kind of point out more specifically um, so there's no surprises as to what people are approving. And then there's also some map map changes. We had to fix fix two of the maps um, because of mistakes that were made. And I think that was it. I had some questions around the um, um, accessory um, dwelling units and what the change was. I thought our regulations were more permissive than state law, but when I read the edits, I didn't quite understand what was happening. Okay, so most of our rules were more flexible. Um, a couple of changes. State law now says that it doesn't have to be a single or one bedroom, a studio or one bedroom. It can now be any size. So we had to accommodate that. And I'm just scrolling up to it. So I've got the language in front of me. Yeah, and as I'm scrolling through, I'm noticing a couple of things. So as we changed the residential uses, we had to fix the parking standards because the parking standards weren't addressing the same things. Accessory dwelling units. Um, so, um, so there are a couple of little tweaks. So I'm looking at the section 3104. A couple of the tweaks um, for people who are here, when Brandy was here helping to write everything, she tended to take things out of out of this the way the statute worded them, and she would reword them in a different way. And when we went through later on, um, for a couple of other places, city council preferred that. If un unless it unless there's a reason not to, we should really replicate how state law words it. So says you no know, one within or two. While Brandy changed it to say within or associated with. So that's where that there's a little change there. So I've reworded it a little bit um, within or pertinent to the primary dwelling unit provided the ADU meets all of the following. So we struck an efficiency or one bedroom because that's no longer can be one of the requirements. So that's the first strikeout was to strike out an efficiency or a bedroom because now a two bedroom, you can, you can have a two bedroom ADU under state law. Um, clearly subordinate and distinct from, so that was added in to match state law, the primary dwelling unit. And then the other set of changes, the single dwelling unit with the ADU all other applicable requirements for single. Um, so yeah, then a little bit just to help clarify. It's been previously written that the ADU meets applicable dimensional standards and parking requirements. And what is it now says is the single dwelling unit with the ADU meets all other applicable requirements for single dwellings without an ADU, most of which are usually dimensional or parking, kind of help to clean that up a little bit. So I think the, the big change is really just that first one under number one, an efficiency or one bedroom apartment is struck. Do you have any more questions for him, John? 
No, it's just not exactly how I remember it, us sending it to the, the city council, but I guess city council might have changed changed things. Um, and then the other question I had, or maybe issue I wanted to bring up to the planning commission that I think we discussed in the past was on the parking, um, minimum parking requirements and um, which are only, I think, applicable in certain zoning districts and whether or not it made sense just to toss them. That was one thing I brought up in the housing subcommittee. Maybe that's what you're remembering. Uh, Cause I think I'd reached out to you to ask your opinion on that too. So that was, it was a suggestion that I too had, had brought forward and kind of planned to, you know, to have. What, what do others think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think if, if our intent is to promote infill and density, that it doesn't make sense to have parking minimums. But it was for specific districts, wasn't it, John? It wasn't just a blanket removal of the requirements. That's the current state. I mean. Right, that's the current one. At, at last, last go around, we couldn't get everyone on board with tossing them and so we we sort of split the split the baby and um it's a weird expression i don't know where split the baby comes from <laughs> but uh but uh oh, we left it in some know. districts and uh, <laughs> anyhow um but i think uh I don't know. I just re recall in the past like year or two, us maybe it coming up a few times and most people thinking, you know, we're not accomplishing a lot with minimum parking requirements. Um, at least nothing really, I think that's in the public interest. So let's just, they probably do more, uh, more harm in taking up, uh, discussion time and, and having that checked off and various staff reports that, Mike writes or, or Audra writes to the, the DRB than anything. So if we can just make it easy and say there are no, no minimum parking requirements, I, I would be in favor of that. And I don't know if now is, is like a good time to do that if we're proposing something anyhow. For residential, this is strictly for residential. I'm not clear about how extensive it is that, that you're suggesting. I mean, I would I would propose getting rid of the whole whole section. Which uh, which section is it? It is. It's on page ten of the PDF, but it's Figure three thirteen. Yeah. Okay. I just found it too. Well, I think it's a big, uh, a big move to remove the entire chart, which is kind of basically what you're suggesting, right? Um, so I think it would take more discussion. If it was just for residential, that might be, might be um, a different story. So I think where the balancing act comes in is where there's a lot of on-street parking. Um, there's actually a, a lot of districts where there is not on-street parking or where on-street parking could be, it is, is very sparsely used. Those are areas where you really don't need to have parking standards because um, think about the rural district. So if you lived on Elm Street, out past um, the, the Wood, old Woodbury College out there. You go out past the Nature Center. You can't park on the street. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have parking standards because you, you're you forced to fit all your parking on your property. And so it, it becomes its own limit, limiting factor. Um, it's only where there's on-street parking and where there's a lot of on-street parking, a place like, you know, um, the parts of Berry Street or, you know, um, just outside the meadow on Elm Street, 
where a project could have problems, but that's, you know, nobody has a right to on-street parking. So it's, it's, you know, it's a policy question. The only issue that would come up with removing the chart is that we do have a requirement that tries to fit people into that window. So we have minimum standards that are, you know, pretty minimum. Um, most projects are coming in above that minimum because for economics, they want it. Um, you know, we've had some housing projects come in that are looking at, you know, one, 1.25 cars per, you know, parking spaces per dwelling unit, um, which, you know, it's good. They were, um, the, the developers are very happy to see that our numbers, our requirements were so low because they weren't forced to put in more than they wanted to. Um, so that was a good sign that they were kind of in that place. They were happy to see our numbers were so low that they weren't going to be at the minimum. They were going to be above the minimum, but only by a little bit. Um, the issue is our zoning also has a buffer at the other end that says, if you want to put in more than double, then you need to go to the DRB and you need to demonstrate a higher level. You have to justify why you would need more than say two cars. You know, if you're putting in 20, a 20 unit residential building, then you can, you have to put in at least 20 parking spaces, but you can't put in more than 40. And if you want to put in more than 40, you've, you need to do a higher thing. So if we eliminate the table altogether, we also lose that upper bracket where if somebody is going to be coming in to put in unnecessarily a large amount of parking, then we wouldn't have the ability to address that. Now, maybe that doesn't come up very often, or maybe it wouldn't come up very often, but just, just so people are aware, that would be... Um, another place where it could be impacted by removing the minimums. I mean, we could, we could change it to maximum staple. I think that would be fine. But right now, the only thing we would be accomplishing is telling someone that they can't build uh, a house or residential structure because we think that they don't have enough parking in a place where we are trying to encourage more housing. So we're saying you can't build more housing here because you don't have parking. Like that's that's really all, the only thing this is accomplishing. It's not creating any more parking spaces for anyone. It's not helping a uh, parking situation or, you know, it's not like it's creating a parking garage or anything. It's just saying you can't build something because you don't have enough parking. Or else that you have to provide that in your site plan, that you have to provide that you have that off-street parking, because we can't plan on developments having access to on-street parking, which is what you said before, Mike, right? We don't have a right to on-street parking. And on-street parking might go away. Hopefully, at some point, the on-street parking would go away. So, you know, it's a trade-off, then, if we, if we don't say, well, you need to have off-street parking... Um, and, oh, here, we're going to take away your on-street parking, um, even for projects that might be too distant to be able to um, have reasonable uh, access to downtown. I mean, I, I don't, on street parking is, is like by far the most efficient type of parking there is to be pushing things off street is just putting down more pavement and requiring more space for cars that is not really, I don't see how this furthers any goal that's articulated in the plan. Nowhere in the plan are we saying like, we need uh, people to create more pavement and parking for cars uh, on their properties. That's not- No, but a, continuing, a continuous piece of all of the planning for more bike lanes and everything else is removing on-street parking. So we can't say that we will always have on-street parking. We might not. And uh, just to know that that, you know, that we can't depend on that as a given. And um, so if we're saying, oh, well, they'll just park on the street if they're making a delivery, if, I mean, you know, anyway, there are all kinds of different options here. And I think residential, does potentially have a different um, need than uh, than necessarily some of the other uses. So to just 
kind of toss out the whole table without discussing it further, I think is a problem. So I think for me, um, when I've thought about this issue, uh, you know, putting on my policy hat, you have to make assumptions when you start to try to regulate parking that you, you know may not end up matching reality. So that's a big risk when we go to tell people how much parking they need, when in reality it's probably something different. And then you, and then when I kind of juxtapose that with the idea that this is the kind of thing that the market actually works out, where a renter is not going to agree to move into some place if the landlord tells them that your parking isn't reliable or, you know, or if it's clear to the renter that, that there's no reliable parking that meets their needs. So it just feels like we're regulating in the abstract and then, but then the market's going to work it out anyway. So that's where I'm left with like, this just doesn't make sense as policy. But if we have an occupant, a rental occupancy rate or vacancy rate of less than 1%, then renters don't have choices. You know, if they find something that is in their range, uh, you know, in their income range, they're not going to be able to say, oh, well, I can't park my car. So therefore I'm not going to take your apartment. They're going to take the apartment and then they're going to, you know, have to figure out how they get to their job in Barrie or wherever. Um, yeah, I but mean, not I'm having the parking allows that, that rental apartment to be more affordable and for us to create more, there's a significant cost to creating a parking space. Like I, I have a friend in town and, and this always makes me laugh where he, he complains. He's like, well, it's really annoying that I don't have a parking space for my, my, my apartment. Um, I said, well, why don't you move to a different apartment? And he's like, well, cause it's so much cheaper than the other apartments. And I figured out a place where I can park my car. And that, that's like perfect. Like he has a more, he has choice and he has a more affordable um, apartment and he's figured something out. So I think people will get creative um, and find solutions. And that's what, what we, I think we want to see. And, and most times I think the market will, people will build probably more parking than um, they think they need. But, be, but it, right it now, just, it's, it's yeah. basically a big cost on additional housing units that we're imposing. Well, I mean, it does take consideration. I would not say it was a, an extremely large cost. Um, having had rental units that required parking spaces, I mean, yes, we, we don't require more than one parking space. But um, I think to just, I mean, and I, I would be interested in knowing what people are doing um, you know, what I've heard anecdotally, if they don't have parking, is they park in the parking garage um, overnight, and then they get up early in the morning and move their vehicle, or they park somewhere, you know. But now we have, and now we have the um, odd and even side parking ban um, during the winter. So I don't know how that's going to affect on, on street parking. It'll be interesting once we actually have snow. I mean, of all the, the units that we have now without parking spaces, would it be preferable to remove those units and replace them with parking so that every unit had a parking? Or would we prefer to have more uh, housing units and fewer parking spaces? I think I'd rather see the landlords have to provide, not provide necessarily on site, but at least have an accommodation for it. And then if the, if the uh, tenant doesn't need it, that's all the better. But I mean, I'd be interested to find out what are people doing? You know, what But if the tenant doesn't need it, why, why do they would have? we require it? Well, it's, it's pretty rare that a tenant doesn't need it. Um, so anyway, I don't know if this is the time uh, when you want to have that whole discussion, but I think it needs further consideration. Well, I, uh, I am. Oh, if you're done, Barb. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm I'm in support of what John and I think Kirby are saying. I mean, I would I would like to remove it, but I we can't do that for this hearing anyway, right? Because it's not in the motion. So, um, but I'd be interested in you know I don't know making some sort of whatever the next I don't know Kirby what would the next step be or should we put it on an agenda? 
because I would be interested Love. in making the change. Yeah, you you raise a good point about how the you know the the hearing for the changes before us has already been is I, I is that right, Mike? Is that actually correct that that the the notice has already been done? Yes, we can't make changes tonight or next week, but once January 11th comes and that hearing is open, we are free to make whatever changes we want including bringing new things onto the table. So we can take up new items um, that get, that can then get forwarded to city council at that time. So we're, we're not limited specifically to what we have. And in fact, I would argue that because we already are amending table three dash, whatever that's in there, that we certainly have already warned that we're making amendments to it and we can make changes um, before sending it to city council. Um, so we, we could uh, certainly make changes. And, and I, I don't have any um, opposition to John's recommendation. Um, I'm just putting out a, a few things that could come up that we may want to consider. So if we wanted to potentially have a discussion to amend the parking, we should maybe think about putting that on the next agenda as well, just to talk about some of the kind of red lines that we might suggest as a motion at the 11th to go through and say, you know, um, here's the uh, amended parking section that we want to incorporate into this change. You mean talk about it at our, our next meeting? Mike? Yeah, if we, if we have one, it'll be the next meeting would be the 28th, is that right? Yes. Okay. If yeah, we were planning to meet on the 28th. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we'll put that uh, as an item for next time as well. And, uh, you know, we'll plan to proceed. Like, if, if we decide to propose something or, or change anything, then we could bring it up in the way that Mike wants unless anyone has like a problem with going about it that way. I mean, there are just being devil's advocate. I mean, there's the case that it's, it's, it's a better practice to put it in the, to put it in the notice of, for the hearing or even strategically, if you think it has a better chance without, you know, by putting it out there first, but if no one has a problem, we'll do it next week. Uh, that said, any thoughts on that? You're saying we'll discuss it at our next meeting? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, uh, okay. but, but I was throwing out, you know, there's, you know, there's other considerations. I was, I just wanted to point those out to people before we, you know, put it in stone. Okay, well, we'll plan to talk about it next week then. Yeah, I think, I think the last time we, um, John, made this suggestion, I think it was with the design review proposal. And I think we were trying to limit the, the amount of potential controversial items. So that way we didn't damage the design review because, you know, not everybody is going to be in, in the public is going to be in favor of not having parking requirements. People who have, who live in areas with tight on street parking might not want to have that removed. So they would like to make other people build, build parking. <laughs> yeah. No, they I already think this have is a much it. better time to talk about it. Uh, it's my annual case for getting rid of our parking requirements. Okay. It maybe it's your final annual case because it will be moved. Um okay. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, do we have anything else on uh, the zoning changes here? Okay, everybody's good with that. Uh, so then that, that means we're gonna move on to the city plan and discussion of what we plan to do without an MPG. Um, I can start with my thoughts, which are that we could continue the plan as normal. We just put off the digital side of it because that's what we were planning to do with the MPG money, right? Uh, so 
it it sounds like it could just be a delay, but we don't have to substantially change the plan other than that. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, that's really what I, what I wanted to kind of get back to you all on the planning commission was that we did not get funded for the municipal planning grant, which was going to be kind of our technical help to build things out. And that kind of puts us in a position of, um, okay, what's our next, what's our next strategy then? Um, because we're, we want to build this plan out. We put a lot of work into it. Do we want to shift gears to go to a more conventional, traditional um, document? Do we want to continue to try to do it, but in a web format? Do we want to continue to try to do it in this uh, ArcGIS? ArcGIS Hub was what I was trying to put it into because the city does have an ArcGIS Hub. Um, it's it's a I think it's a slick way of doing things. I think it would work great, but um, without the technical pieces. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't done it, so I just don't know how hard it's going to be. Uh, so I want to kind of kick that out to you guys and hear what thoughts you had. Anyone have anything to say? I think we work on the content, and as long as it's, uh, it's not handwritten, we'll be in a good position to potentially move it into a digital format um, later down the road. Mike, was there a sense about why we didn't get the MPG? This is the second time, right, that we haven't gotten one. Um, are they are they saying we have a, we've gotten enough as Montpelier? <laughs> I, I haven't talked to Josh yet. Um, uh, Josh Hanford, so he's a commissioner, and uh, he, he'll give me some insight. I do know in general that. Um, when, um, you know, back when I was young working at the regional planning commissions, the MPGs were 800,000 to a million dollars statewide. Um, they were in that, <clears throat> in that range. So that's, that was quite a bit. And then when the financial crisis hit in 2008, 2009, Everything at the state got hit hard, including municipal planning grants, and they were cut down to 400,000. And in 2012, they announced they had brought everything back to pre Great Recession numbers, except they hadn't. They never brought back the municipal planning grants. Um, so, municipal planning grants this year, I think, were about 460, 480,000, something like that. So, it, it, it basically it, it never came back. Grant amounts have gone from 15,000 to 20, 25,000. So there's now more money that's being allocated to projects. So fewer projects are getting approved um, in addition to the fact that the money's been cut in half. And I think my guess is what they've weighed and looked at is it probably that um, a number of smaller municipalities that don't have professional staff um, and they probably would look at somebody like Montpelier and say, hey, why would we give you guys money when, you know, we've got the, the Warrens and the Waitfields and the, and the Woodberries of the world who don't have professional staff um, and move them in. Um, it's that or else my grant writing skills have gotten significantly worse as I've gotten older, one or the other. <laughs> I, I suspect that you're right, Mike. I think I think the the, the perception of need, and I, and I can't say I disagree. To be honest, no, I can't. No, it would be, it would be tough to leave. You know, some of these these smaller towns to to kind of get through, especially when we've had a number of changes to state laws. So you've got um, you know these Act One Seventy Ones these um, acts for the energy requirements. Um, so there are a number of requirements that are either for, for municipal plans or for zoning that have gone through in a lot of communities that need to make updates. And I think they just looked and, and weighed it at that, in that way, which is disappointing, but understandable. So, yeah, so I think where, where a small community used to just go through and readopt their plan, 
they can't because the state laws have changed. So they're forced, forced to go through and do revisions because of the state law changes. So how much can we do online then? I mean, basically it was going to give us a lot more interactivity um, having the grant. Um, how much can we do without it? Um, it the advantage of the ArcGIS hub is it is really a two-way street. Um, you, you think you can think of it as both your way of getting our plan out, but it's also a tool to get information in. Um, it's an interactive um, tool that that you know you can go through and you you put together these storyboards that let you kind of scroll down and talk about things and provide opportunities for input. And it's it's really slick when you see you know skilled people who are skilled at putting them together. It, it really is, um, is is really a nice resource and I think very educational and would really help the public understand, you know, what is government? I think so many of the issues we have in politics today is I think there's just a groups of people who don't understand what government does and how we benefit um, their lives. And I think these not that they're going to be all going out reading our storyboards, but at least having that information out there gives an opportunity for people to understand how government works, how it's not really, you know, wasting money and blah, blah, blah. It just gives them an opportunity to kind of see why we're doing it. They, people can disagree with it philosophically and politically, but at least they understand there's a reason why we have the rules the way we have them and why we do things the way we do them. Um, and I think that that's the nice part. But I think if if we don't have that ability to do it, we can step back and write out a, a more of a written document, a more traditional document, let's say. But it's set up in a way that we know when we're ready. You know, um, we still don't need to make it a 500 page plan, but we can do it shorter with a lot of links, which is what the website was going to be. Um, you know, we don't have to talk about everything we can just give a summary with a link to a report um you know talk about what the complete streets plan is but we don't have to restate the complete streets plan um and then have a link and we can still do that in a in a pdf document where somebody would most likely download the document be able to read it and be able to take active hyperlinks through to connect into these other other documents and so we can keep it short we can keep it tight and then when we're ready in a year or two we can come back and just go and plop that language out and stick it into a into a more dynamic web-based document um i think it, i don't think it'll it, that that part will be very hard it's really about the getting the right content and in, in, in place um so I think we focus on that. I could try to help set things up and I, I, where I won't, where I won't be able to um, get things done is, is, is producing the content because I won't I just won't have time. But if I can at least set up the framework and have people fill in the gaps then um, we should be able to get, get something out. You think you're getting something online digital or getting something PDF document? No PDF. Um, <laughs> we can we can make this digital. Okay. That all sounds great to me. Anybody else have anything? So it's going to be up to our our structure or subcommittee then to make sure that the framework that you're talking about, John, is, is put in place so that we're, we're following a framework that will easily be digital. Is that right? I think that'll be part of it. And I think it, it'll be um, iterative as well. So 
I think just a quick push to get something out and and it'll be rough and ugly but it'll be something to respond to and that I think will help people understand or or allow us to go back and forth and make sure that whatever we are working towards or producing is what we want it to be um, rather than trying to create the you know, complete the format in a vacuum thinking we've got it all right. And then, and then doing all of that work and then ending up with something that we don't feel great about. So if that makes any sense, I think once we have content to work with, we can uh, shape it into something online and not, not wait for it to be perfect, but just get something. Um, and then I think that'll help us understand what needs to change or how we might you know if we if we just do one chapter let's say or or ideally actually i think it would be two because the the benefit of this or what we're trying to do is integrate them so that um they aren't a whole bunch of silos so maybe if we work with two chapters that have some overlap and just put get that in front of the planning commission we can talk about what um if that makes sense what we like what we don't if there's value added there or if we're just doing something because it's kind of cool yeah i think we just want to make sure that as we you know bring forth the content that it's in a framework a format that works um so that's that's all i want to have some clear idea about yeah, and I think we already, we already have a bit of a, a template, right? Yeah, I don't know how much of a, of a template I, that I've, I've seen for the text part, but um, invite me to the next style and, you know, the con um, continuity and style committee, just so I know what I'm working on. That's, yeah, that's I mean that I, would help the rest of us too. To um... I, I think, yeah, go ahead, Barb. If you no, just that, that's that's it. Yeah, we 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 you know we'll be work. We need to work closely with Mike, and like we. Should, I mean, I think we're all aware of that. I don't really need to say it, but we 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 have to work closely with Mike, obviously, throughout this. I mean, he he has he has his vision. You know, we have different members who have their own different visions. Everyone that thinks a little different, a little fuzzy about right, right now, but it'll work out as we start to get something down. But, but yeah, we should make sure we're looping Mike in on everything, obviously, when it comes to, to the structure part. So, so John, do you think that there is something, a rough uh, format available? Well, we have the, the table. Um the template tables that we've um, pulled together that I think will be a strong base for and allow a lot of flexibility for what we um, what we produce. Can you send out a link to those again? Because that seems like it was a long time ago. This is the same thing that Marcella was talking about sending out earlier, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so it's, yeah, it's we, we just haven't seen it yet. Okay, great. Okay. Anyone have Somebody else? gets that to me, I can send it to everybody. Yeah, I can do that after this. Okay. So yeah, that's most of where we're at with that. When I'm meeting with the, I, I met with the Conservation Commission today. We're getting close on the natural resources chapter. So that will be another one that we will be able to Put into the into the put onto your plate and then get wrapped up and then we're really just down to a handful of chapters um we're halfway done with the community services um we still have public safety i don't know how that's going to be worded Pu public safety community justice um emergency services i don't know how we they're all the same basket i don't know how we title that chapter and land use. 
So land use will be ours. I think we can work on land use once we have the natural resources chapter done because that's a, an important layer of information that we need to kind of go through and do our, you know, a generalized land use. And I think we did a lot of our land use work when we put together our, our zoning. A lot of those zoning neighborhoods um, really kind of broke the city down into different little pieces that we don't need to be that fine grained for. Um, you know, we can generalize it a little bit out um, to get our land use map but we can talk about that after the public hearing is over because it'll um, conservation commission meets once a month. And so they won't be done till at least January. Um, they'll have a meeting in January to talk about their final set, final changes. So uh, about the land use uh, chapter, uh, I would encourage everyone as you're doing your subcommittee work. Um, if you have, you know, big ideas that you're bringing to the subcommittee that think about if it's appropriate for part of our land use chapter discussion, even if it doesn't end up in that chapter, I mean, that'll be a time for us. I think it'll be a good opportunity for us to open, open it up very broadly, our discussions on things like this parking discussion that, that we had earlier. We could, we could bring things like that up during the land use chapter discussion. And I'm never opposed to us, instead of planning on doing something, just being more efficient and just doing it. So that's some possibilities too. At least I, I'm open to that. Um, why put something in the plan when we could even more easily just change the zoning now and achieve that goal? Uh, so, so those are the things on my mind when we get to the um, land use chapter. And so I invite everyone to, to bring your ideas. Yeah, so there were some sections on the and the transportation plan that the subcommittee talked about that were really specific for specifically addressing land use, which is not necessarily appropriate. We thought in the transportation section, but um, should be referenced in in the in land use, or at least should we should be thinking about it, so we can keep flagging those things and bringing them forward. Yeah, there's a tight connection between transportation and land use. You know, obviously you can't have, um, you know, high density walkable if you don't, you know, if you don't have the the sidewalks and the, the infrastructure to support that. And I think that's part of the the balance. That's that's there. And then, as John points out, we can't have all the parking and basically push everything back out. <clears throat> You know, you you automatically reduce density by converting space to parking. So um, that's the best way to make medium and low density is by having lots of parking spaces. So you kind of have this balancing act between getting getting the high density without having the impact of the vehicles. Um, and some of it will balance itself out. People who don't need cars, you know, um, the Parking, uh, cars are, are, you know, a necessary evil in a lot of cases. Um, people can't afford them, but they can't live without them. So they have to figure out how to live and, and have them. So getting the high density lets people um, take, take advantage of opportunities that aren't available in low density, so. But also then having transportation options that they can use so that they can survive, you know, get around without a car, get access. And I am noticing too that in the housing section, there is a reference specifically to, um, you know, housing neighborhoods being within a quarter mile, half mile of, of various things like parks and recreation and all of that. So all of those kinds of things do certainly impact us on the land use basis too. Okay, that all sounds great. Um, does anyone have anything else to add before we adjourn? Especially related to the city plan, that's the item we're discussing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so getting well, getting to the template for for John's idea, we might be able to put together i might be able to work to put together at some point you know not right away but soon 
maybe a little bit of a historic resources. There is no subcommittee for that one, so we could put together a quick one, then that can help as one of your two kind of chunks that we can start with as a kind of a trial chapter. It's the one we used for, because it's a small and concise chapter, we used that for the implementation strategy. That was why we did that one first. Um, it's a pretty tight topic, so we can get a chance to kind of put it in there before we jump into a housing or a transportation. Okay, sounds like a plan. Anyone, anyone else have anything uh, city plan related? <clears throat> okay. So do we have a motion to adjourn? We want to just check in real quick on the 28th. Everybody's good with that. It's kind of a funky time between the Friday before is Christmas and everybody good with the 28th still? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nah. I'm probably 90% on that. I'll make it work. All right. Yeah, I'll just have to get the agenda out early that week, which is next week. Okay. Anything else? I'll move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second by uh, motion by Ariane, second by John. All in favor of uh, adjournment? Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you next Thanks. time. Thanks. Bye. Good night.